If you've ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix, please consider sending it my way. Just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, as always, thank you. I have one of those dumb glitches that was really neat for me at the time, but in the grand scheme of things doesn't really mean much to the world, nor should it. It's such a boring and mundane thing that there's a million possible explanations, but none of them really seem to fit or work in this specific case. So I'm going to say that it was a glitch and move on from there. About a week ago, it was my birthday, but I'm well beyond the age of getting a cake and having people over. The day of, while my wife and I were at the store, I saw these ice cream cones that were filled with fudge and were on a cone that was marked as being made of Kit Kat wafers. I love Kit Kats, so I said, hey, let's just get those instead of a container of ice cream. That way we can enjoy them for a few days. My wife agreed, we grabbed them, and we bought them. After we ate, we both were pretty antsy to get at the cones, which sounds kind of dumb as I type it out. But we opened the box and were sorting through the two flavors. As I was sorting them, I noticed that there was one missing. There were supposed to be eight cones total, four double chocolate, and four vanilla with fudge in them. I dumped them on the counter and counted, and sure enough, there were only seven there. Four chocolate, but only three with the fudge. I know that this isn't a common thing to happen, but it does happen. Sometimes packages get messed up when they ship, so whatever. It is what it is. My wife mentioned that we could always take them back, but at this point, we had opened it and it would look like we were just trying to get a freebie after eating one of the cones. So I said that it was fine. We'd had our ice cream, enjoyed it, and moved on with life. After a few days, we had each had three apiece, leaving just the one extra. The box was sitting in the freezer, and my wife had grabbed it, making a comment about how there was only one left. It was a chocolate one, no fudge, just basic chocolate. And I didn't much care for that flavor, so I mentioned that she could have it. I will say that, at this point, I did not watch what she did in the kitchen. But I saw her walk into the living room with the ice cream cone in hand. She came in, sat down and was 100% without a doubt eating one of the cones, and it was the last chocolate one. I then made a dumb comment about how, if they hadn't packaged them wrong, I would be enjoying my last cone with her as well. She laughed, made a joke at me being whiny, and that was that. About five minutes or so later, I got up and went into the kitchen to get some ice for a glass of water, and when I opened the freezer, there was the box of the ice cream cones sitting on the bottom shelf. I was a slight bit annoyed, thinking that she had just left the empty box in the freezer. So, I grabbed it to make a passive-aggressive statement, and, to my surprise, when I did, it wasn't empty. I opened it and looked inside, and there was a single cone in the box. Even more surprising was that it was the one with the fudge, like it was the one that was missing. I grabbed it and walked toward the living room, and my wife saw the cone and asked where the hell it came from. I asked her if it was in the box when she got hers, and she said no, that she had pulled the box out and tossed it into the recycling bin. I looked back, there was no box in the bin, just the one in my hand. We both kind of stood there for a moment, and after a few seconds, I tossed the box into the bin and went into the living room with my cone, and sat there just kind of staring at it. 
I don't think either of us knew what exactly to say or think about this because it really didn't make sense. I mentioned that my birthday was for sure three days prior to this, and I had a fudge cone that night. She had chocolate. The next day, we swapped flavors, and that was when I realized I didn't like the chocolate one as much. Then, yesterday, I'd had the last vanilla fudge one, and she had chocolate, leaving just that last chocolate one in the box. We both remembered that there was for sure one missing on the first day that we got it, and that there were seven and not eight in the box. We both remember the same set of events where we had been eating one a day up to this day, which would have ended on that day with the one that she was eating. And yet here we were, staring at the now replaced fudge cone. I know that getting an extra ice cream cone from the Matrix may sound boring, but it was really weird, because we both remember the exact same thing and the exact same order of events. This cone should not exist, and yet it does. I don't think that we misremembered, because it was exactly four days of us having the cones, so it would math out correctly. I don't think she would have lied about there not being one left, because there'd be nothing to gain with that, really. And... I know for a fact that she didn't go out to get a box of them to replace the missing one, because she would have had to have gotten rid of seven other ones just to pull this off. And, to the best of my knowledge, you can't buy these individually. So, in the end, I had my last fudge cone, and I enjoyed every second of it. Because it was good. I have no idea where it came from, how it got there, or why it was even missing in the first place, but the Matrix gave it back, and I guess that's just the mystery that is our simulation. I'm not sure if this is a glitch in the Matrix per se, but it's definitely uncanny. Some backstory. I used to live in another state for a few years before moving back to my home state. In this other state, I started my first job at a grocery store. I was a typical innocent good girl who loved her job, and could cake on the cheese for the customers and actually look like a normal, happy human being. And this got me a good reputation with our regulars, and I would often help the elderly with heavy groceries into their car. Around this time, the weather was turning, and it was becoming bone-chillingly cold with vicious winds. One of my regulars saw that I didn't have a heavy coat, let alone gloves, and she surprised me with a gift one day. I opened up the little bag and she kindly gifted me a pair of unique, knitted, green gloves. They were long, and had been specially knit to have a left and right hand. I was touched. I thanked her genuinely and wore the gloves every winter for as long as I was in the state. When I moved back to my home state, at some point, I lost that pair of gloves. I don't know how and I don't know where, but it was early 2012. Fast forward to 2017, and I'm just getting to know a coworker on a more non-work level, and we decided to hang out at her house for the first time. I'm just getting to know her and all, and we had some deep conversations. Somehow, the subject of gloves comes up. I told her that I needed some, actually, as I had lost my pair a while back, and she goes to her closets to grab a shoebox on the top shelf. She says she actually has a whole box of gloves that she's found over the years, and I can gladly take a pair. She's digging through the box, sets out a few pairs, and of the whole box full, she says, How about these? And she has the same pair of gloves that I once had. My jaw drops. She sees my face, and I'm like, No way. She looks confused as I do, and I tell her, You're not going to believe this, but those are actually my gloves that I lost a few years ago. 
and she says, are you sure? And I told her my story of how a customer had gifted them to me, and she just says, whoa, I just got a chill. Synchronicity. We had a very deep friendship for years after that. She was very spiritual and taught me a few things, and made a huge impact on my life. But, unfortunately, she met a toxic guy and she just let him control her life and she became unrecognizable. Now that I type this, the last gift she ever gave me was a pair of new gloves, and with foxes on them, before we stopped talking to each other over that psychopathic guy. But I just thought it was pretty crazy that she, of all people, had my pair and instinctively gravitated towards that pair to give to me. This happened in Ontario, Canada, during the winter of 2012. I was walking home from work at around 3 a.m., and the temperature was well below zero, and the walk was long. There was a large parking lot, without a single car in it, and it was covered entirely with freshly fallen snow. Not drifts, a fresh, even light snowfall of a few centimeters tops. Now, I get to the glitch in the matrix part that I will never be able to explain. In the middle of this snowy parking lot was footprints. One set. Like the invisible man was standing there, or like someone flew away. I don't know. I need to make this more clear. The entirety of the parking lot was undisturbed. No footprints leading to the single set of footprints in the middle, and no footprints were leading away from them. There was nobody standing in the middle of the parking lot, and furthermore, there were no tire tracks in the snow. It was a completely fresh and undisturbed, evenly distributed, snowy parking lot, other than the impossible footprints in the middle. The world record long jump would not make that distance if jumping comes to mind as an explanation. And there were no snow drifts to have covered the trail of footprints. The footprints were like running shoes, and they looked as though they had just been made as the snow had not had the chance to fall where they were. There was no way that I know of that anyone could have made the footprints without walking to or away from their location, which boggles my mind. Regretfully, I did not approach the footprints, and was sure to keep my trail at a distance from them to preserve the integrity of this scene. In hindsight, I should have approached or yelled at the footprints or done anything to explain them other than observe. It's not a big deal, but I will wonder for the rest of my life about it, nonetheless. If I was not clear on anything, or you have further questions, please do ask, but most importantly, please try and explain this. I was debating whether or not to post this, but I was sitting having a conversation with my boyfriend, both of us having a cigarette in the bedroom. I stopped smoking like a month ago for anyone who's going to tell me it's a bad habit. We liked to use those cup-like car ashtrays that have a screw-on lid for convenience and cleanliness purposes. My ashtray was on the bedside table. I was sitting facing forward with the bedside table and bright blue ashtray clear in my peripheral vision, maybe 65-ish degrees relative to my position. I lost focus on it for a moment as I looked down at the cigarettes to assess the ash buildup and see if I needed to ash it. I did. This was probably a fraction of a second. Just a quick glance. I turned to the ashtray and expected it to be there, and it was gone. The bedside table was hard wood, and there was nowhere for it to roll because of the other items on the table. I did look anyway, because what is someone even supposed to think? What else is there to do? It was absolutely gone. 
It wasn't on the floor, couldn't possibly fit in the narrow gap between the bed and the floor. I didn't really have time to think further on it as the cigarette was still burning. I got up and used my boyfriend's ashtray. He was a few steps away, almost directly opposite me, facing my direction in his PC chair. I put out the cigarette and go to sit back down on the bed. The boyfriend swivels in his chair to check something on the PC, and then I see the ashtray fall from somewhere above my field of vision and smack loudly into the bedside table, rocking slightly from the impact. There were no shelves near me. We had no pets. The cupboards next to me were built into the wall. Unless I somehow momentarily lost complete sanity and placed the ashtray on the blade of the ceiling fan without my boyfriend seeing, I don't understand how this is possible. Does anyone have any theories? I moved away to New Zealand from the UK about seven years ago. My brother and I are huge Tolkien fans and really enjoy The Hobbits and The Lord of the Rings books and movies. So, obviously, moving to the country where they made the films was a huge deal for me. My brother didn't move here with me and remains in the UK. I live in the capital, so I have a lot of access to movie locations and WIDA workshops. So I bought my brother some really cool souvenirs from WIDA that are all Lord of the Rings slash The Hobbit related. One of these things was the stone Feely has from the Hobbit movie, with the runes carved into it. I only bought him one, and it came in a small blue pull string pouch. I also bought him a fridge magnet, with the White Tree of Gondor on it. I sent him these gifts in the post from New Zealand to the UK. It's been about six years since I sent him these gifts, and today he told me that he now has two of the rune stones. I sent him one. They're in the same blue pouch. Only one pouch, but two stones. We were thinking about this and how we could have accumulated two stones, and then he tells me he also has two magnets. I'm so confused how he got two of each of the gifts that I bought him. I didn't buy them online. I picked them out at the Weeda gift shop and personally sent them myself, so it wasn't a shipping error. I'm the only person he knows in New Zealand, since my whole family are English, and they live over there. I only sent him one other gift since, and it was a book. The Songs and Stories of Tom Bombadil. But he only has one of those. It's so weird, and I'm still confused. I have experienced other glitches, but nothing of this magnitude or so readily obvious to my perception. This glitch was a couple of months ago, and I'm still thinking about it, but I've just chalked it up to weird stuff happening, and things like glitches are bound to happen if you are paying attention. I was waiting in a hotel room for a ride. My room was on the ground floor with a view out the peephole into the parking lot. There were maybe three cars in the lot, so I was peeking out to see when my ride arrived. The initial event, I looked out the peephole and saw a red car pull up, not my ride, and saw a girl getting out. She was talking on the phone far enough away that I could hear her voice, but not what she was saying. She had on a yellow skirt and sunglasses. And yes, I creepily watched her for a few seconds because I'm a guy and she looked good. Which is why I only remember the skirt. Anyways, she walked towards the building, and I could clearly hear her say, I love you, as a goodbye as she left my field of view. I didn't think anything of it and wandered back into my room for 30 to 90 seconds. It's hard to say exactly, but it wasn't that long. At which point, my ride texted me saying they were pulling in. Back to the door. 
I went back to the door and looked through the peephole. I'm not sure why. And I watched the exact same scene replay. Girl in yellow skirt and sunglasses getting out of the same red car in the same spot on the phone. I watched her walk towards the building on the phone and say the same very clear, I love you, closing statement. I cannot explain this. My first thought was logically someone could go back to their car if they forgot something or whatever. This was exactly the same action and conversation. I remember doing the cartoon triple take and my mind being super incredulous at watching this repeat. I'm not sure what the hell happened, and I'm just going with weird stuff happens. It makes me think of Deja Vu in the Matrix for sure though, and I can't help but think, what did they change? This happened in probably 2017 or 2018. I remember it vividly, and it was one of the weirdest things to happen to me to this day. I was still living with my parents in their house, which was my grandparents' house before we moved into it in 2012. The house was built in the 60s, and it had a lot of the original finishes, creaky floorboards included. Not a whole lot of renovations were done to the house, so it was still that very choppy layout. A lot of smaller rooms and twists and turns. Many weird, unexplained, spooky things have happened in this house, including finding, suspiciously, human-like bones in our attic, photos falling off the walls, doors opening on their own, crazy, horrible nightmares that happened to us while we were in that house. Really, the list goes on. The one true glitch happened to me midday in the summer. My, now ex, boyfriend had moved in with us when I was in the 12th grade. We were packing up to go on a boat trip. My parents had already left, leaving just my boyfriend and I in the house. The lower story of the house was a mashup of rooms, a back bedroom, washroom, long hallway with a guest bedroom and laundry room off of the hallway. The hallway branched off a dining room, and to one side of the dining room was a kitchen and entryway. The only way to get from the entry to kitchen to the hallway was to go through the dining room. I was coming out of the bathroom, going towards the kitchen. On my way, I was making sure all of the lights in the house were off. I peeked into the laundry room slash guest bedroom, and I saw my boyfriend folding some clothes. I remember saying, Are you almost ready? And he replied, Yep, just making sure I've got an extra sweater. I tell him, Okay, just turn off the light when you're done. And he says, Yep. I continued, turning the light off in the hallway, the dining room, and then going for the kitchen light. My boyfriend was in the entryway waiting for me. There is no way he could have gotten to the entryway around me. I jumped and it made my stomach sink seeing him standing there. I remember asking him how he got there, and he looked at me like I was crazy. He told me that he'd been waiting there for the past five minutes. I'm notorious for being the last one out the door. I explained that I had just saw him in the laundry room, and I told him to stop messing with me. He swears up and down that he does not remember that, and I know that there was no way he could have gotten past me into the entryway without me noticing. It is physically impossible. I didn't stop or turn my back to the path to the entryway. I remember being scared. I got him to come back to the laundry room with me, and we checked the whole house to see if someone was in the house. No one was there. He promised me that he didn't remember it happening. It just doesn't make sense. We were never able to figure it out. I vividly remember looking at him and having the conversation. I remember the way my stomach dropped when I saw him in the entryway. I didn't drink at the time, 
I didn't partake in drugs or anything of that sort. And it still gives me a weird feeling when I think about it. Some stories on this sub remind me of a specific instance with what I usually, endearingly, refer to as voids, where things seem to travel in inexplicable ways. My most prominent experience was sitting in a cold bedroom on top of the bed, with some paper and one of those cheap ballpoint pens with the removable caps. I was idly playing with it while staring at the paper, and I honestly can't remember what, if anything, I was even putting to it. I became amused with placing the cap on the butt end of the pen and flicking it off, but with practiced force so that it wouldn't leave the bed. The floor was all concrete, and I really didn't want to get up. I challenged myself and placed the cap on tighter, and this time the cap hit the ceiling, then the wall, and then clattered onto the floor. Retrieving it, it wasn't long before I put the cap on too tight and shot it off to the ceiling again, but it never came back down. I heard the sound of it hitting the ceiling, but nothing else. This room literally had nothing soft in it, save the bed, and I saw the cap go well away from the bed. I searched the bed anyways, the floor, the dresser, but nothing. I gave up looking for it. I had entirely forgotten the cap until I happened to be sitting on the bed again, holding the pen, when I heard an unbelievable sound of clattering plastic. I look over, and clearly on the floor where I would have previously expected it, was the pen cap. There had been maybe about a week or two difference in those moments. It's the sort of story that is so benign and out of place that I don't really bring it up, but I think that it fits here. Earlier this morning, I was trucking my way down to San Diego when something strange occurred. I was pulling a 53-foot trailer and moderately heavy, so I was cruising pretty slowly in the slow lane doing about 55 miles per hour. In my side mirror, I see a semi-truck approaching from behind in the lane next to me, going faster than I was. He passed me, and as he passed... I noticed his windows were all blurry, foggy, dirty, maybe, to where you couldn't really see inside his truck or see who was driving. Anyways, he passes me and he's bobtailing, which is when it's just the truck without a trailer, so he's considerably lighter and faster. Whatever. He gets far enough out of view and I'm just driving along. About two or three minutes later, I look in my mirror again, and here comes the same truck. Keep in mind, at this part of the freeway where this occurred, there are no exits. He comes up next to me and passes me again. I'm thinking, what the hell? I've been going slow this whole time. I haven't passed anyone, nothing like that. Same dirty old truck, same foggy windows. It had a distinctive look. Well, this doesn't make any sense. I start thinking, he's going too fast, so I can't even catch him, even if I had wanted to. I think about it for a few minutes, and eventually forget about it. Maybe ten minutes later, I didn't even notice him in my mirror this time. But he passes me again. For the third time. And once again, I haven't passed anyone. He's always going much faster than me when he passes, and I can never see inside the truck because the windows are just too dirty or foggy. This was the last time that I saw the truck, and yes, it was the same truck. I've been doing this trucking stuff for a while, so I know the differences in trucks, and I notice the small details. But how the hell did I get passed by the same truck three different times? Times. I 
I have two separate occasions to talk about. The first, I'm still brushing off, but the second is where I'm confused. To set it up, I live in a fairly rural area, about an hour from major cities. The main highways are more so single lanes and wind through hills and tree lines. A few weeks back, I was driving home at night from in town in a line of cars. There were a few ahead of me and only one behind me. We were all at the point in between residential areas without any roads or driveways that came off the highway. As I said, this was nighttime, so we all had our lights on. After taking a bend, the car and its lights never came around the bend after me. There was no sound as if they crashed, and there was no place to pull off. I was alone in my car, so I just chalked it up to being tired or it being late. However, today as I was driving home in the daytime, something similar happened again. This time I had my father in the car and we were turning off the main road onto our street right after a white Prius, close enough to see the color, make, and that it was not a new Prius. As we turned around the bend onto our street, the car was gone. I was going to ignore it until my dad verbally asked me if I had seen the car or where it went. After the bend in the road, it's a very long straightaway, and we would have seen it in a driveway or further down the road. Anyways, just super weird and I'm scratching my head over it. This happened at my mom's house somewhere in mid-2020. It was around maybe 10pm at night. I start hearing the ringtone of my cell phone and said who would be calling me, and noted that I usually leave it off. The ringing, however, continued, and it must have rang around 50 to 100 times. I'm in a room with an old desk with clothes piled on it, and the ringing to what my cell phone sounds like, kept ringing as if it was somewhere in the pile of clothes. I start searching through these clothes to see if my cell phone may be in there, but found nothing. There was even my older brother's laptop nearby, and I opened it up and listened to it, but nothing. I even asked my brother the next day if his computer had a ringtone, and he said no. The ringing sound stayed over by the pile of clothes. Also, nobody in my mom's house had the same ringtone as me, despite it being a common ringtone. As the cell phone kept ringing, I said, cell phones usually go to voicemail after ringing five or six times. However, this ringtone rang 50 to 100 times. As the ringtone kept ringing, I asked myself if I was dreaming or going crazy. I was certainly awake and sober, and then finally the ringtone stopped. I go into the living room like 30 feet away, and my phone was sitting on the TV tray, turned off. I turn it back on to see if someone had tried to call me or left a voicemail, but there was nothing. I'm in my 40s and have been skeptical over the years, but I can't explain the cell phone ring when there was no cell phone to begin with. Is this supernatural, a glitch in the matrix, or something that can be rationalized? Please, feel free to share your answers. So that was today's collection of Glitch in the Matrix Stories. Hopefully you all enjoyed this collection. I really know that I did. It was always, as always, good stuff. It's uh, weird stories, as they always are. You know how that goes. Glitch in the Matrix Day is always the day where I get to tell the weird stories. That and days where I do paranormal stories. Those are fun, too. Yeah, to be honest with you, I, I enjoy doing all types of stories. So, yeah. Anyways, um, if you enjoyed this collection of stories, please hit that thumbs the uppity button, the little thumbs up button. Um, tell the, the algorithm that you liked the video. It helps the channel. It really does. If 
you really liked what you heard, you can subscribe to the channel, if not already subscribed. That is probably the biggest thing anybody can do to help the channel. Um, more subs I have, and more interactions there are, such as likes and comments, the harder YouTube pushes these videos. So it helps the channel grow tremendously. There's also Patreon, memberships, and super thanks, where you can do other things to fully support the channel extra. Never ever expected, always, always appreciated. But we all know that, right? We all know what you can do, what you can't do, what we do, what we don't do. You know what, there's one more thing you can do, and that is, leave me a comment. Now on Mondays, we do what we call the Word of the Week, where I give you a random word, and we're currently streaming through the alphabet here. I give you a random word, you write a comment, I put on the screen during this little segment the comments that were left with the Word of the Week. On the screen right now, and probably several moments prior to this one, are the comments that people left with the Word of the Week. Each one of these people stepped outside their comfort zone, left a comment, and now they're on the screen, being celebrated in this little rant here at the end. So, yeah. Thank you to each and every single one of you who left a comment. Even if you didn't, I still appreciate you. Just know that. Now, moving on to this week's word of the week, I have chosen a very simple word. Very, very simple. Fact. F-A-C-T. Something that actually exists, reality and truth, something known to exist or have happened, a truth known by actual experience or observation, something known to be true, I think you know what fact means. Now, it is a fact that I would appreciate it if you would left, if, if you would leave a comment, if you would left a comment, if you would actively do a past tense verb. Um... It's a fact that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. There you go. It's a better example. I hope you all have a beautiful day. I hope I see you on the next video. Hope you have a great week. But of course, until next time, friends, remember you're loved, you're valid, you're important. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. You're the best you that you can be. Okay? And of course, until next time, much love and sleep well.